Hey, what's up everybody? Camero here, and this is part 5 of the How to Make a Pokemon tutorial series, and in this episode we're going to talk about trainers. We're going to talk about making trainers, we're going to define trainers, and then we're going to battle some trainers. So, let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is make a trainer, and right now it's going to be hard to make that from scratch. I mean, new event, you can try to do that, it's not really going to work out very well, but thankfully, like many other things in Pokemon Essentials, trainers have already been defined for us. So, you're going to want to go to Route 3 from the Pokemon Essentials, you know, from the stuff they've already created. And here you can see a beginning trainer, like this is this a youngster, he's your normal dude, he's a basic guy. There's campers, which are lined up to face each other, which will turn into a double battle. There's like interesting like triple battle scenarios, this is a little complex, I don't want to go towards that. This right here is a single trainer that will turn into a double battle, so one person will throw out two Pokemon, well, that's kind of cool. And then here's two people, which is like a couple, and they'll fight you. But, you know, for our purposes, we're going to keep it basic. If you want to go more complex, I would say go to Route 3 and look at all these guys. But, for the sake of this video, let's just copy this little youngster, our little youngster Joey, and paste him onto our route. Nice. Cool. So he's here. I'll put him here. So that way he'll look down and then battle you when you try to cross this line. So, let's double click and take a look at him. Here's our guy, he says, Hi, I like shorts, the company needs you to wear. Staple, that's a classic line, I'm gonna keep that. Uh, his type is youngster, so these are very important. I'll, I'll, I'll run down through all of these right now, let's go. So the first thing is comment battle. Basically, this is what he says when he first sees you. So, hi, I like shorts, the company needs you to wear, blah blah blah, cool. Then there's type, youngster, so you have to type that in all caps. This is what type of trainer he is. Um, if you go into the Trainer Types PBS, which can be found... So in your Pokemon game, you can just go to the PBS folder, and there's a file there called Trainer Types. If you go to Trainer Types, you can look at there's so many different Trainer Types that have already been defined. You have Bikers, you have Aroma Ladies, you have Pokemaniacs, you have so many. You can make your trainer anything you want, and you can even make your own trainer. Like your own type. So let's try that right now. So, 71 different types of trainers have already been defined. Looks like it might be 72, because they count from zero. But yeah. So let's make our own new type of trainer now. What we can do is just really copy this line. Boop. And then paste it, and then change the number to 72. So the 72nd trainer is our own custom trainer. And in all caps, that's what name he is, like what type he is. So our other guy that we're working with right now, he's all caps youngster. So let's make our guy all caps uh, dingus. This is just, nah, I think this is too stupid. I'm gonna name him ABCD. Just an all caps ABCD, that's what type he is. Then when you load into the battle, this is the title that you see in battle. So, maybe not, let's just call him Test Guy. That's what type he should be. So when you load into the battle, it'll say he's Test Guy. But in all caps, it'll say Test. Nice, so he's a Test Guy. And then this number here, it says 100. That's basically how difficult he is. And then Elite is like, what, this just determines what music it plays when you fight him. So if you want to have like special crazy battle music, you can do that. But I'm just going to delete that for right now. Um, he, I don't want to have Elite 4 music when you're playing the guy on the first route. But yeah, this number right here is basically how difficult he is. And his difficulty determines how much money you get when you beat him. So let's make him kind of crappy. He's not a very good trainer. He's not very smart. Let's give him 20. And then he's a male. Nice. So 72 male. So now... We can make him a test. Instead of a youngster, we can do all caps test. Nice. And let's give him a name. Ben. Let's name him uh, Patrick. His name's not Rick, so Patrick. Okay. And then when you beat him, he'll say, oh, I lost. And then if you talk to him again, he'll say, hey, you can't get a trainer event simpler than me. Let's change that. So instead, like I'm doing stuff that might be a little bit complex, but I'll talk about the event system in full later. Like right now I'm doing like editing text stuff and you see the slash B, it's a little confusing. But he'll just say, A, you're good. Cool. So you don't have to worry about editing anything else. Well, there is one more thing you need to edit. Up here, his name, the name of the event, it says trainer, and then parentheses there's a number. That number is how far he can look. So that's, that's his distance. So right now, he only looks, he, he can only see two down, 
So he goes, you can see one, two. I want him to see one, two, three, four, five, six. I, I actually, you can't see my mouse right now, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we want the number in parentheses next to his name to be trainer six. Cool. So when you cross his line of sight, what'll happen is he'll say, hi, I like shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. Then he'll walk down and then he'll battle you. And then the battle will start with a guy named Test Patrick. Trust me, you don't need to worry about editing anything else. You can try to edit this stuff if you want to go more in depth. But the thing that's really cool is Pokemon Essentials, it takes these comments and automatically edits the stuff underneath. So don't worry about it, just edit these four green things. These four green comments are all you're going to need to edit right now. Was that five? I can't count. That's five. Okay. So, now we have our test Patrick. But there's, there's a couple things that we're missing right now. If we go down and cross this line of sight, who are we going to fight right now? Who's, who's Patrick? What is Patrick's team? Let's make that. Next, so there's trainer types.txt. Now you have to go to trainers.txt. So here you see all the trainers that have been defined. You've got your rival one and his team. You got, you know, you've got swimmers over here. You got a beauty. There's all these trainers that have already been predefined. So let's make our own one. So to start the next line, let's do hashtag and then a whole bunch of dashes. That's just the formatting that you have to do. And then the first thing you do, like, let's just follow the formatting of all these other trainers, shall we? So it's the type of trainer, then the name of the trainer, how many Pokemon are on their team, and then the Pokemon. So let's make our guy, he was a type test, his name was Patrick, and let's give him two Pokemon. Then hit enter again, oh not 20, okay, don't want to have him 20 Pokemon. Okay, and then his team should be a Rattata, whatever, at level 5. And then a, let's make, give him a Sneasel, that'd be cool. That'd be dope. Okay, so he has this Rattata at level 5, Sneasel at level 6. If you want to make these Pokemon more complicated, you have the tools to do so. You can, if you want, you can just set the level and the Pokemon and be good. But if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see that they actually defined a gym leader. And um, he, has, he has items that he can use on his team. So if you, so there's two, which is the number of Pokemon he has then a comma, and then an item. So he'll use that item. So you can, if you want to make a trainer have potions, you can be like, oh, he has three Pokemon, comma, potion, comma, you know, citrus berry, whatever you want to do. And he also goes and sets the moves for his Pokemon. So like he has an Onix, level 14 with the citrus berry that knows Head Smash, Rock Throw, Rage, Rock Tomb. Zero, I think is its IVs, M for male, then a couple missing spaces, shiny. So you can set Pokemon to be shiny on trainers. And I think there's other IV values, potentially. The type of Pokeball he's thrown out in, uh, his nickname, it gets pretty complex. So if you want to delve deep into it, you totally can. But right now, Test Patrick has two Pokemon, a Rattata and a Sneasel. Cool, so let's save that. And now there's one more thing that we're missing. Remember when we set the number to 72? So 71 is our champion, and 72 is our guy. 72, this number here, specifies the sprite that this trainer uses. When you go into a battle, it'll look for Trainer 72. If you don't have Trainer 72, it'll just be an invisible square that you're fighting against. But, if you go into your art folder, let's see, graphics, characters, this will be where all your characters are, you can go down, so you got Trainer 000, 001, 002, you want to find Trainer 072, and I actually already made one. So, you can put whatever you want here, make sure it has like a transparent background, you can import it to like set the transparencies, I think I talked about it in an early episode, if I didn't talk about it, I'll talk about it in a future episode, but basically, here is Trainer72, he's kinda cool, he's a guy that I made for um, a Pokemon game of mine called Pokemon Paradox, I'll talk about that at the end of this episode, hee <laughs> hee. Um, but I also made a, uh, a walking sprite for him too, which is pretty cool, but basically that number it only matters for the in-battle one. The number that you set in trainer types, the number that you set here, determines what battle, what sprite you see when you go into the battle. Okay? So this number does not determine what you see outside of the battle. What determines what you see outside of the battle is just double clicking the guy and changing his sprite. That determines what you see out of the battle. And let's make sure to change his other state. So this might be getting a little bit complex, but when you beat him, it turns self-switch A on, which then changes you to this next page, 
which then will require you to set his sprite here too. So set his sprite in two places, and now our trainer should be done. That should be all it takes. It should be that simple. So if I hit play, it should be like, hey, do you want to fight Rick? Ho I mean, hopefully it shouldn't... It shouldn't pop up with a thing saying like, hey, we haven't, you haven't defined Rick. Or Patrick, sorry, I'm calling him Rick. His name's not Rick. Okay. So now we're in the game. There he is. There's our guy. Nice. So let's test his vision range. One, two, three, four, five, six. Holy crap, he still saw me. Hi, I like shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. See, that text there is in blue because of the slash B. I'll get into that later. It's... But now it's starting the battle. It's playing... Oh, shoot! It's not using the right sprite. See, look, this is what happens. Interesting. Why is it doing that? Okay, so this is what happens if you try to fight somebody without setting their battle sprite. I thought I totally set his battle sprite, though. But yeah, look, he has the Ratatata. Nice. Just as we set earlier. Cool. So there's the Ratatata, and now it's his Sneasel, which I thought is pretty cool. I like Sneasel. I don't know what my favorite Ice-type Pokemon is. I gotta think about that one. Maybe Articuno? I don't know. I, like, I do like Ice Pokemon. Okay, cool. There he is. You beat him, and he says, Oh, I lost. And now if you talk to him again, he'll say, Hey, you're good. Just like we said before. Cool. So now our trainer is basically done. And then if you leave, and then go back, he'll be in his original spot. I believe. So you leave the map, go back. Oh, no, he's still there. Huh. Why is that? Okay. But let's figure out why this guy doesn't have... He's Test. So that worked. And test is 72. So that works. Oh, this is trainer. Uh, okay, that's the problem. This is trainer 72, not trainer 072. There we go. So now if I hit play, this should work. Just a small little issue, but you see, it, make, it makes a big difference. You gotta make sure that you have your names and your formatting for everything perfect. Ta da! Hey, I like shorts. Hey, me too. I'm wearing shorts right now, buddy. And boom. There's our guy, there's Patrick. So, that's all it takes to make a trainer. Like, okay, since I have more time in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a double battle now. So, if I wanted to, I could really just copy this guy, paste him, so now I got two of him, and then have one of them looking up. Cool. So now if I hit play, I think it might freak out because there's two of the same guy. Let's see if it does. It won't. Cool. So now there's two of the same guy. One of them below, one of them above. I mean, if you wanted to, you can make one named Test Guy, you know, Allen, and then set the, the, the team for Test Guy Allen to be like, oh, you know, he's got a Pidgey. Oh, wait, shoot, you can't see this. He has a Pidgey, and, uh, you know, whatever. And then when you walk into these, it'll do a double battle. Hey, I like shorts. Hey, I like shorts. We all like shorts. It's a party of three dudes liking shorts. It's kind of weird, but... And there's our double battle. That's snazzy. That looks really... Okay, well, that one Ratatata in the back kind of looks like it's floating. But other than that, that's pretty nice. Oh, I can't run. No! Ooh, okay. So, I'm going to show you something else that's really cool. In my... I have a little bit more time to show you a little cool trick that I like to do when I'm testing games. So, I don't know if I showed this earlier in an episode. I might not have. But right now I'm in debug mode. You know, I can press F9 and I can look at stuff. If you hold control, you can just walk through walls, disappear and fly. Um, so you can use that to like bypass things. So like this trainer here, I can just like walk through him. Oh shoot, but the other guy can see me. But if I'm holding control, he'll be like skipping battle. At cool. So yeah, if you hold control, you can really mess with things. Like, oh, I jumped down a slope. Hold control, jump back up. That's great. Yeah. So if you ever want to test your game and make things faster, just hold control. It's great. You can use it to skip battles. You can use it to. You can actually use control to run away from trainers. You can use control to hop back up ledges. It's dope. Okay, so that concludes this episode. Hopefully, it helped you. Um, if it didn't, you know, let me know, and uh, I can address that in a future episode. But yeah, I'm. Uh, so this this is the part where I talk about why I disappeared for a couple months. So um, I was actually working on a Pokemon game for a game jam called Pokemon Paradox. It's okay. It's not a bad game. It didn't win any awards or nothing, but uh, I had fun making it. I learned a lot, and I had a good time. 
Um, I would recommend you download it and try it out. Let me know what you think. Um, there's probably a couple bugs here and there still, but I've, re I've been patching it and making it better, and I th it's a pretty cool idea. Like this trainer right here, he he's, he's a special type of trainer in Pokemon Paradox, so that's pretty cool. But um, other than that, um, the, another reason I disappeared for quite a while was I was actually working on a professional game design test to potentially... Let me turn this off potentially get a job um, as a game designer in the industry. I, I currently work at a game company, but um, I might have taken the next step up to be a full-fledged designer. We'll see if that... We'll see how that works out. I don't know. I'm, eh, it might. You know, who knows? But, uh, yeah. And then other than that, I was just being lazy. I mean, I actually recorded this episode once before, and then I scrapped it because it wasn't really good. It wasn't filmed very well. I, uh... I was using, like, stupid names. Instead of calling my guy a test guy, I called him, like, Drumbo and stuff. You know, I, it was just... It wasn't good. But, um... Yeah, so I refilmed it. I was, like, just being lazy. I was playing video games instead of making videos. I mean, I should make videos about playing video games, don't you think? But, um... Yeah, and that's about it for this. Thank you. Um, you know, if you like this and this helped you, uh, subscribe and, uh... Stay tuned for future episodes. There is no shortage of things to talk about in this. If you have any questions, once again, let me know. And I'll be sure to cover them in future episodes. And, um, you know, thanks for subscribing and thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, you know, that's cool. I respect your choice. And, <laughs> yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you next time. And, uh, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.